Good day, everyone. I am Teacher Ara. Today, we shall learn about the different processes that takes place along playing boundaries. Are you excited to begin? Let us first take a look at our lesson objectives. At the end of this topic, you are expected to first explain the different processes that occur along convergent, divergent, and transform fault boundaries. And second, determine the results of colliding, moving, and transform fault boundaries on the Earth's crust. Do you remember what plate boundaries are? What are the plate boundaries? That is right. A plate boundary is a region where plates meet. And this boundary, the plates Nikolai move away from each other or slip is like patch each other. There are three kinds of plate boundaries. When two plates converge or meet with each other, a convergent boundary is present. Meanwhile, when the two plates pull away from each other, a divergent boundary is present. Finally, when the plates slip or slide horizontally past each other, their boundary is called transform fault boundary. Geological activities takes place in these plate boundaries. What do you think happens to the continental and oceanic plates when they converge? How about when they diverge? Or when they slide horizontally past each other? Will their forms remain the same? Or will it change? What do you think? Let us first investigate a convergent plate boundary. Convergence may occur between a continental and oceanic plate, between two oceanic plates, or between two continental plates. A convergent plate boundary has a subduction zone. Subduction is a process by which one metaspheric plate descends beneath another. When a continental and an oceanic crust converge, subduction occurs which results to intense or destructive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions because of the movements of crust and magma. Formation of volcanoes or building of volcanic arc. This happens when magma rises and erupts, creating volcanoes. Formation of trenches, a cliff of mountain ranges, and formation of igneous rocks in the seafloor as a result of the lava flows at the surface, which called rapidly to become basalt. Meanwhile, in the convergence of two oceanic plates, subduction also occurs, which results to the formation of an island arc which is the line of volcanoes that draws on the upper oceanic plane. Trenches may also be formed, which can cause earthquakes. Tsunamis can also be generated as a result of strong underwater earthquakes triggered by convergence. Finally, there is no subduction in the convergence of two continental plates. Since both plates are too buoyant to subduct, since it has nowhere to go but up, this creates some of the world's largest mountain ranges. Magma can penetrate the thick crust, so there are no volcanoes, although magma stays in the crust. Metamorphic rocks are common because of the stress that the continental crust experiences. With enormous slabs of crust smashing together, continent-continent collisions bring on numerous and large earthquakes. A lot of activities can happen in a convergent plate boundary. Is this also the same for the emergent plate boundary? Let us investigate. 
Divergence takes place when planes move away from each other. When two continental plates separate or diverge from each other, it results in the formation of downfaulted valleys called rift valleys. As the rift valley increases its length and depth as the spreading continues, the valley develops into a linear sea. And earthquakes may also be produced because of fracturing and movement. What about when divergence occurs beneath the shallow atmosphere? What will be its effect? In this case, the rising convection current below leaves the lithosphere, producing a mid-ocean ridge, and as a place separate, new material from the mantle oozes up to fill the gap. This material is slowly cooled down to produce new ocean floor. Also, extensional forces stretch the lithosphere and produce a deep fissure. Now, let us consider transform fault boundary. The motion in this type of boundary is lateral sliding. The motion of the plates in this boundary has no major effect and does not produce volcanic activities. Transform fault boundaries can be found in the ocean floor as well. They commonly offset the active spreading ridges, producing zigzag plate margins and are generally defined by shallow earthquakes. We now see that the logic activity takes place in these different plate boundaries. Let us analyze this picture. What type of plate is plate A? What about plate B? Why did you say so? That's right. Plate A is an shiny plate because it is relatively thinner compared to plate B. Meanwhile, plate B is a continental plate because it is thicker and it floats higher than the other plate. Describe what happens to the plate A as it collides to plate B. Correct. Plate A, which is the shiny crest, bends downward because it is denser than plate B, which is the continental plate. What do you think will happen to the leading edge of plate A or the shiny crest as it continues to move downward? Very good. The leading edge of plate A will start to melt because the temperature beneath the crust is higher. What do you call this melting material? Right! The melting material is called magma. What is formed on top of plate B? Good answer! Volcanoes are formed on top of plate B or the continental plate. Our final question. As the plate continues to grind with each other, what other geologic event could take place? Very good! Our earthquake could take place as the plates continue to grind with each other. Congratulations! You did a great job! Before we end, can you sum up what we have learned today? That's right! We identified the different processes or movements along the three kinds of plate boundaries. At the same time, we also learned about their effects to the geological features in the events that take place in that given area. Until then, see you in our next lesson. Thank you for watching. Stay home and be safe.